J.W. Jones, what's going on, man? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm very well. So are you up in the great white north or uh, are you on the road right now? Yeah, I'm back home in Ottawa for uh, about 10 days between between runs in the U.S. And I was just doing five weeks across North America. So it's it's been pretty crazy. That's great. So you're able to get across the border now. How long has the border been free and easier to get get across? Well, we've actually been okay to get across the border since day one because we have work permits. So we can just come and come and go as long as we, you know, follow all the procedures and yep. show the negative test when we come home and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yep. Cause Canada seems a little more tentative about COVID. Uh, you know, I knew that they'd get people in the stands for the, the playoff stuff. <laughs> <laughs> they, they found they a way, didn't they? Hockey in Canada. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, Damn exactly. American franchise with all your money. <laughs> Yeah. You know, if we didn't have such a repressive tax structure in Canada, better guys would play for the Canadian franchises. <laughs> oh, I know all about the tax. I'm just here. saying. <laughs> yeah, it's rough. No you know, that, those tax dollars go to, you know, arts and culture too. So they, they yeah. have to write all the festivals. So we really can't go either way on that, can we? Yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't tease you that badly no too. no it's fine it's fine <laughs> yeah. so I'm, I'm glad you're able to work and and uh any any gigs of of uh, uh exciting import recently man i mean uh we did a couple sold out shows in um in bc that were great just outside of vancouver in a place called white rock at the blue frog um i mean we did the cadillac zach gigs in california which were fun jimmy yep. vivino came out and sat in with us oh, and oh. uh Man, yeah, it's just, it's been uh, incredible. In Austin, I ran into uh, Gordy Johnson from Big Sugar, nice. Canadian Canadian guy, and uh, and Jimmy Vaughn invited me to lunch, which was like mind-blowing. So that That's happened. <laughs> yeah. He's a sweet guy. He's, he's really great. Yeah, he really is. You know, uh, I sent him a video from our sound check, and I just said some Jimmy Reed, dot, 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 you know, and then Okay. The video is about three minutes long and three minutes after I sent it, my phone rings and I thought he actually pressed the button by accident, you know, on his yeah. iPhone or something. <laughs> I picked it up. He's like, how you doing, man? I'm not going to make it to your show tonight, but you know, come and see me tomorrow. And I said, all right. Sweet. So uh, yeah, pretty cool. And Luann Barton's fabulous too. I always love seeing both of them. Yeah, absolutely. She hasn't, she hasn't been singing with them as much lately. No, I, I, I noticed that. Uh, yeah. You know, they're, they're not getting any younger. I don't know if she, you know, has any health issues or if it's just uh, doesn't yeah. want to get out there as much, you, yeah. you know, you can only be a road warrior for so long. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah man. It's not easy. Yeah. I mean, you're 10 years younger than I am. And uh, which meant I saw Bob Yor in his prime. Angie LaFleur. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Nice. yeah. But, uh, and Kenny Dryden, I was oh, wow. alive to the 72 summit series on my That's daddy's cool. lap. That's very cool. Yeah, yeah. I probably didn't retain a lot in 72, but I've watched it enough. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't watched it, it's Canadian history. You should go back and watch it. Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, you, you got, I, I watched a few interviews to snoop on you before this, and, and you and I know a lot of the same people. I, I heard that uh, Tommy Hambridge produced one of your records. And Tommy's originally from Boston, wrote all of Susan Tedeschi's hits. So yeah. she'd be sending her like, you know, she should be sending him money. Yeah. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, uh, Tom, Tom's great, you know, working with Buddy Guy, Skinner, Quinn Sullivan. Tell me, yeah. how, how'd you get hooked up with, with Tom Hambridge? Um, I was in Memphis for the Blues Music Awards. I was hanging around the lobby in the hotel one night and... Um, I remember sitting on the couch and I saw um, Jeff Simon from, from Thorogood's band. Yep. And, uh, and he comes up and uh, he was like, Hey man, I want you to meet Tom Ambridge. And I was like, okay, sure. And I had no <laughs> idea who he was. And I was just like, okay. And he goes, you two need to make a record together. And he like puts us together and we shake hands and you know, the whole thing. And then uh, I was like, sure, man, sure. And I literally, I, I never heard of him. Like I was. And Amber just really, got a cue that's so long, JW. I, yeah, that's amazing. I know. That, I know. And, and honestly, up until that point, I had never really thought about producers, to be honest. I had only thought about musicians. You know, if you ask me who Buddy Guy was, obviously I've seen him in all, all these many times and all that kind of stuff. But I wasn't hip to the producers at that time. That was, you know, like, I mean, more than 10 years ago now. And um, anyway, so, so I looked him up. 
and I saw his resume and I was like, wow. Okay. So I sent him a overwhelming, message. Yeah. Yeah. It's overwhelming. It's well, you know, the other part is he's such a songwriter. Like, I mean, people like oh, yeah. Haynes just clamor. Like, when can you yeah. squeeze me in to, to do some songwriting or buddy yeah. fire? I mean, like skin deep, I think. Uh, oh yeah. Tom, Tom wrote. Yeah. That puts me in tears every time, man. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and the guy is incredible. So, I mean, he, I wrote it to him or I called him and said, Hey man, you know, would you be interested in doing something? And he said, absolutely. Let's do it. I was like, all right. Sweet. And, and then as I got to know him, I realized he doesn't say yes to everybody because no, 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 he no. can't, yeah. he can't, yeah. he just can't do it. And, um, and I also witnessed firsthand him songwriting, you know, there are a couple lines, a couple of verses I wanted some, some thoughts on, and he wrote a better verse within literally seconds. And I was like, what, how does your brain even work like that, man? It's incredible. It just does. It just yeah. does, man. Yeah. Yeah. No, he, he, uh, started out in the Susan Tedeschi band and Susan and I are just a few weeks apart in age. So as her career was kicking off in Boston, I was producing Holly Harris's show and handing Holly my friend Susan's record. Yeah. Hey, my friend Susan's record. And then I moved yeah. to Pittsburgh and I was at WYEP and then I broke Susan in, in Pittsburgh and uh, she shortly then came around with Johnny Lang and uh, yeah, it was just great to, to be able to, you know, see Tom and Susan do great. And, uh, Absolutely. Yeah. I think he loves it down in Nashville too. Did, so did you do the record in Nashville with, his his people his studio yeah yeah i mean my band at the time was on a couple tracks um one of them being jamie holmes who i'm in a band with now called horojo trio yeah. that won the international blues challenge and um yeah we went down to to um nashville and he said you know i'll get my guys you know uh I'll get, uh, I'll get Reese. And I was like, Reese Winans. He's like, yes. yeah, I'll get yeah. Reese. I was like, pardon me. Like <laughs> Reese Winans is going to be on my record. What? Right. right. And, uh, yeah, man, it was incredible. It, you know, um, great, great lineup, great musicians. The whole vibe was awesome. And a couple, a lot of those tunes, we didn't even rehearse. We just went into the studio with basic ideas and yeah. out it came. That's fantastic. Yeah. And, and, and I assume Tom just fostered an atmosphere that it was or, it organically birthed uh, throughout yeah. the sessions really well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good. Yeah. Good, man. Well, you know, uh, the other stuff that, that I saw online, you were chatting about, you know, you, you, you kind of have a tendency for the West Coast swing thing. And uh, you know, it's something that I love. If it swings, it's good, right? I mean, and your crowds love to dance. And, you know, you mentioned Junior Watson amazing you know like and, and yeah. you know you don't overplay you got great tone you have great musicality i mean that's what i come away from listening to your stuff oh wow um, thank you very you much know, so how do you think you developed your style and do you think you're already all the way there or are you no oh. you maturing you're like always I'm a not. project right yeah yeah I'm, I'm definitely nowhere near where i where i would like to be and, and where i know i will end up being um, but yeah, you mentioned the West coast guys. Uh, yeah, for me, it really all started with BB King. You know, I saw him when I was 15 years old, uh, I was playing drums at the time and I switched to guitar and it was like, I want to do that, you know? Right. And, uh, so it was BB. And then, you know, back then it was like BB. And then the next second is Stevie Ray Vaughan, you know, that's what you discover. And then from there, it's up to you, whether you stay there or you look back and see what, what did he do? And that's how I found out about Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Vaughn, the fabulous Thunderbirds, all that world of stuff. And then I was like, Oh, who's Anson Funderburg? Okay. Over there. And all the Texas guys. Um, and then, so it was really the Texas guys at first, other than BB and yep. um, you know, T-Bone, Albert King, the obvious stuff. Right. But then I heard about the West Coast players, you know, Kid Ramos, Little Charlie, uh, Alex Schultz, Watson, you mentioned, you know, uh, Rick Holmes from all these guys, you know, and then I totally got into that. And, it, you know, that was a whole other mindset, a whole other way of playing, you know, backing up the harmonica, Hollywood fats, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And, and what what I liked about that was the influence of jazz, you know, especially Little Charlie playing the bebop lines and the, the horn lines and stuff like that. I just found that fascinating. So it, it just became part of the way I play, you know, even though I'm nothing like him as a player, but I certainly have tried in the past. <laughs> <laughs> Keep trying. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, he's got a couple of years on you. you, you he's, know, he does. 
Yeah, and you know, one thing you say that, and it's it's funny you say that because I remember seeing video of Little Charlie where Little Charlie and the Nightcats were already well established, you know, Alligator Records selling lots of albums and touring the world. And Charlie was a great guitar player, but he was nothing in the 90s compared to what he became in the 2000s and the 2010s. Like, holy cow, he just got better and better and better. It was like, how many players can you say got better over time? You know, a lot of players just kind of do a thing and they stay at that thing. But right. Charlie was just constantly improving. Yeah, it, it's funny. You know, uh, when I interviewed Derek Trucks for the first time, he said something like, you know, you can you can get to a certain plateau and fool like 95 percent of the people out there with, hey, you're a good guitar player and just kind of flatline, as you say, you plateau. Yeah. Yeah. Or you can just continue to push yourself and, and be something extraordinary. Yeah. And of course, Derek is extraordinary. And oh, yeah. The, the great players do do that, you know. Yeah. And, and, and I sense that from you. You're you're up there. Uh, Actually, one of the f- most fun videos I saw is you and Chad Smith. And, oh, yeah. You know, I, I know Chad, uh, you know, he plays a lot with these rockers for recovery and stuff. And Oh, yeah. Okay. There's a rehab in, in Boston uh, run by uh, Woody Geisman, the drummer from the Del Fuegos. When he got off the road and got clean, he started helping his friends get clean. Before you know it, he's running a rehab. And now he's also got a sober women's house and a sober men's house. Oh, wow. And once a year, he does a big super group with all okay. his friends. So it's like Simon Kirk from Bad Company, Chad on drums. Uh, I helped him get Warren Haynes one year as a headliner. And uh, uh, Gary Hoey was the the uh, musical director. Uh, you know, like uh, who, who, T- Teddy Zigzag from Guns N' Roses, uh, Alice Cooper. I mean, the list yeah. just goes... Uh, Kate Taylor, James Taylor's sister. Wow. And so we, we put on like these big shows every Chuck Berry. We, we hired one year and Chuck, Crazy. unfortunately was Chuck, but <laughs> <laughs> Chuck was Chuck, but I got to see I've Carol heard that Davis. story many times. Yeah. Yep. Well, yeah, I, I won't mean, the man's dead. So he can't shank me. So we had a <laughs> VIP reception before the show and you know, all the major donors were going to be there. And yeah. um, of course they wanted to meet Chuck Berry. And so we invited him and, uh, Chuck said, well, you know, if you leave a sack of $10,000 in the green room, I'll do that. He says, because you're certainly going to make more than $10,000 if I go there and raise more money. And we were like, just eat the deli platter in the green room, buddy. You're, you're out yeah. of your point. Yeah. And, uh, that was Chuck, you know, God bless yeah. him. Yeah. And, uh, you know, most of the old school guys are great. You mentioned Hubert, you know, being on one of your records too. And Hubert and I were close and he was so genteel and so great to young players. Can you tell me about how you, how you met Hubert? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, the first time I saw him was in Australia at a festival. I, I didn't get a chance to meet him, but I saw him play. And then um, the next time I saw him was in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Okay. And um, we were opening for him. John Hammond was on the show that night. I remember that because I had dinner with him and his band. Um, but anyway, I, I finished our set and I'm only about 23 years old, maybe, maybe 24, I think 23 though. Yeah. Anyway, I, I finished the set, I pick up my amp and I start to walk off and the next band's coming up, you know, whoever's backing Hubert and, uh, and the guitar player says, Hey man, yeah. Can you just leave that up there? I said, Oh no, this is my amp. This isn't like backline. And he's like, no, no, leave it there. I want you to come and play with us. And I said, Ooh. Oh really? He goes, yeah, just set it right beside Hubert, right in the middle. I said, okay so i put it down and this was bc reed a guy from from out there and and uh, i said so let me know when you want to come up and he said no no just play the whole set i said what (laughs) okay and then i'm like advanced warning on uh, you know yeah by the way (laughs) yeah exactly so then i just i stood right next to hubert the whole time and played the whole set and uh i remember there was one solo i played it was only 24 bars long i never did more than 24 next to those guys you know sure. um and somewhere in there he turned around and went yeah man and i was like wow that is like that was the first huge compliment i got from one of the originators you know and yeah. and that was that was all i cared about was you know being in you know in with those guys you know he's all, always been so complimentary and encouraging to people uh yeah in, in his entire life you know it was funny uh we were in Memphis in May, my, my ex-wife and I, and uh, 
you know, I'd known Hubert since I was in my early 20s and uh, I was probably in my early 40s at this time. And we just had free range going in and out of his trailer, known him for so long. And uh, I went out to see Pine yeah. Top or something and bring him his cool 100s, which he always brought <laughs> for. And uh, my wife was in there chatting with, with, uh, with Hubert. And she, she said, uh, Hubert really said something so nice about you, Jim. Said that, you know, he met you when you were about 20. And now that he's known you 20 years, you're still just the dopey, lovable kid that, you know, always, <laughs> you know, was great to spend time with and to, to talk with all day long. And he says, you know, you just have never changed it. it, it and he meant it in the best possible way. And I just started bawling, of course. Yeah, know, man. To, to have, you know, like you said, one of these originators just compliment you. And you're just like, oh, my God. Yeah, there's yeah, nothing better. Be, no, you can keep. Yeah, well, you know, Sue Foley complimented me, maybe better, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> in a different way. <laughs> but, uh, you know, another guy, Fathead Newman was another guy I got along with and, and you worked with and i loved fathead you know and yeah. you know he was he was kind of up north there right you near the border just like kim wilson you you were working with a lot he was in, in michigan so like yeah, tell yeah. me how 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 did you get together with those guys uh well the kim the kim story is a little longer so i'll start with fathead but um with Fathead, it wasn't, I had never met him before. I had never, nope. you know, really crossed paths with him. I literally just reached out to his management and said, Hey, you know, would, would he record with us? Yeah. And, um, and I wanted to record a Ray Charles song, which looking back was like, it took some balls to do that. You know, and, and have fat, yeah. Fathead on it. But yeah. anyway, um, yeah, I just asked and, you know, um, and his, his price was way too reasonable. And I went down there to um, Woodstock, New York, and we went into a studio and I'll never forget this session because it was with a sax player I was working with at the time, uh, Brian Asselin. And uh, we went in there and Fathead, like, we were barely even set up and like testing the audio and Fathead had already recorded one pass through a song and it was perfect. And it was like, okay, um, can we just do that one more time? He's like, yeah, sure. He didn't say much. He was a very quiet man. And then he just played it again. Again, it was perfect. Okay, we went to the next song. He played it. It was perfect. We were done in like 23 minutes, you know? Like it was like, Nuts. what is happening? That everything he played was perfect. So uh, what you hear on the record, you know, if you can even find that record anymore. Like first um, or second takes, huh? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there, there were only two takes of anything. It was incredible. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that was just a really cool experience. And then, uh, and then with Wilson, yeah, it was a whole different animal because I had run into him uh, at a festival in Canada in, where were we? Windsor, I think it was. And uh, I met him there. Previous to that, I had, someone gave me his fax number. So I had sent Jeez. him a fax to say, will you record with me? I was probably 19 writing this fax. Hey, Anyways. don't feel bad because Ronnie Earl still loves to communicate by fax. <laughs> Does he really? That's hilarious. Uh -huh. <laughs> Anyway, that's great. We'll move on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, so so I ended up getting Gene Taylor on my my record, my second album, and he said yes, and then and Kim said no, and then Kim called me, you know, a month later and said, "Hey, man, I've been thinking about it, and uh, I'd like to help you out." And I said, "Okay, well, you know, what's it going to cost me? What what do you charge?" And he told me what he charged BB King and his day rate. And I was like, whoa, he goes, but I don't expect that from you. You know, just, just fly me up and, and cover my hotels. And uh, if you can pay me great. And if you can't, don't worry about it. We'll figure it out. And I said, really? He goes, yeah, I just want to help you out, man. It's like, awesome. wow. Okay. I was 21 at the time, you know, and here he is coming to Canada, staying here for days, you know, recording with us and, and all that. And we played a couple shows together too. Um, and then he ended up coming up every January for three years in a row. And we did two shows each time in Ottawa at the same club at the rainbow bistro. Mm -hmm. And then in the later, in that was 2002, 2003, 2004, in 2004, we also played Toronto and Montreal and um, man, what an experience, no set list. Um, yeah. I, I just had to know what he, where he was going to go and do my best to, to follow along, you know? Yeah, no, you know, and I, I don't you, you probably have the record, uh, big Jack's uh, Memphis barbecue sessions with Kim. Yeah. Yeah, and of course Willie Big Eye Smith was supposed to be on drums, 
and he was late or something. So, uh, you know, the record company owner, uh, Mark Carpentieri, ha happened to be a drummer and he just jumped behind the kit. Oh, nice. Uh, you know, the, you know, that was so stripped down. You could really hear the musicianship from both, yeah. both guys. And of course, Pine still sounded like Pine, even though that was after he got hit by the train, I think, and everything, oh, all that. Uh, that was extraordinary how Pine still, the phrasing, you know. Oh, yeah. This, the speed and dexterity, you know, obviously slowed down, but it was always Pine, no matter, yeah. you know. Yeah, I had a chance to sit in with him one time in, uh, in Memphis, and maybe there's a photo or a video somewhere, but I don't think I even have a photo of, of playing with him or seeing him, but we oh. were on stage together, and it was, I just remember looking over being like, whoa, I can't believe this is even happening. This yeah. is very cool. Those moments yeah. are fantastic. I'm glad you've had those, you know. Yeah, and you mentioned Big Jack. We talked about it before the interview started, but yeah. I was 15 years old playing drums two nights in a row, you know, sitting in for like three songs or something. Yeah. 15 years old here in Ottawa playing drums with Big Jack Johnson and the Oilers. Like, what is, this is just, just unbelievable. I've been very, very fortunate. Yeah, that's great. You know, um, it, 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 you've definitely had the right influences and, and uh, you know, I enjoy your music immensely. And, you know, people really ought to come out and see you. And, and I hear you touring through the New England area soon. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So we're playing in Delaware, uh, in St. George. Uh, do you say St. George or do you say you pronounce the S on that? You don't pronounce the S, right? What? Uh, St. St. George, St. Delaware? St. George is good. How do you want to say uh, it? I feel like a, it's like St. George's or something, but there's an S in there. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I think it's St. George, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's on the 18th. That's uh, Thursday. That one's sold out. And then Friday, we're at Boston Harbor Distillery, and that's the 19th. Uh, you can get tickets on my website, jw-jones.com. Uh, there's an Eventbrite link somewhere in there. You can find that. And I don't think it. that's generally a blues venue in there. It's just a actually it's in dorchester where a lot of my people are from dorchester and okay. south boston that's yeah. where the irish people had to live when we came over on the boat and uh <laughs> yeah it's actually in a nice spot near uh marina bay where like a lot of the guys in the red Sox and the celtics live in marina bay across a river from where you're playing um right and i hear that club is really nice so it's kind of a an unexpected venue for the blues but yeah, well, I mean, what they're doing right now is they're basically uh, renting it out, so to speak. They don't they don't charge a rental fee, but they're just trying to fill it. And if people can get in there and bring some people in, then it's it's a win win for everybody. So, um, yeah, I hope that works out and people come out and see us. Uh, I know we're competing with Joe Bonamassa, who was playing somewhere on the other side of the state the same night but you know that's that's not a good thing for us <laughs> and i think he's way out in northampton or something, something pretty far like that. away it's a totally different market okay well yeah, that's good yeah. to hear the, the following night though on the saturday not so much we're chans in woonsocket and he's 25 minutes up the road in providence <laughs> yes. and, you know chans is great you know john wants to retire soon john chan and uh i encourage everybody to get out there while they still can have chinese food while here in low down dirty blues yeah man it's my first time playing there i've, I've heard all about it and, and never played there it's it's quite the experience and and uh you know everybody in blues and jazz has played the place at one point or another yeah and, uh you know you're you're slipping under the under the wire as, as john heads towards retirement okay good good so that's good yeah man so it's gonna be a great weekend though i mean um like I said, we just did five weeks and uh, the band sounds unbelievable. Jacob Clark on bass and he's playing upright bass too. And nice. uh, Will Loray on drums, who's, who's been with me for four years. And the band just sounds amazing. We, we cover such, uh, such, you know, so many bases. Like we're playing some more traditional stuff and some more rocked up blues stuff and, and everything in between, you know, original material, classic covers, everything, you know. So we put on a great live show and I really hope people come out and, and see it, you know. That's the best when you get a band that that uh, can cover the whole breadth of the blues. And uh, it was funny. I, I was actually taken aback. You were getting interviewed at the the big blues bender, and one of the last questions the gentleman asked you was your feelings about uh, well, something. It was kind of a derogatory name about Joe Bonamassa being a blues rocker or you know, okay. what camp you were in versus you know traditional blues. And you know. Yeah. I, 
I think you gave a great answer that it's a big tent. Everybody who plays quality music. You're interested in it, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I know I Joe. Mean, I love Joe. You know, he's just a nice Italian kid who practices butt off and up there in Utica, New York, which I used to always play hockey in Utica, New York, too. And <laughs> back to you, hockey again. <laughs> back to hockey, but you know. I've been there, you know, there was nothing to do outdoors, but get mugged in his neighborhood. So he probably was smart to stay in and play the guitar. Oh, he's done. I mean, he's done an incredible job. I don't know him. I've never met him. I yeah. think, you know, we've shared a couple of messages on comments, you know, on Instagram or something back and forth, but um, like, this is a guy that like has mastered the guitar. I mean, he, the way he plays, that guy doesn't make mistakes. You know, I, I think about that and I go, wow, like his execution is absolutely incredible. Um, is he a traditional blues guy? No, absolutely not. But he's doing his own thing. And, and he sounds like Joe. I mean, he's as um, you can, you can pick him out as easily as you can pick out BB King. Yeah, you he's know, identifiable. And, and that's identifiable. What, that's the word. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and so, is he, and it's wild, you know, to go back to junior Watson, he's identifiable as can be, but you oh, know, yeah. one, one time he's ripping off a Dick Dale tune and playing surf rock. And then he's playing a West Coast swing and then he's playing Chicago blues. Yeah. It's all exactly. junior. You're like, it's all junior, man. Oh yeah. Within you know? three notes, within yeah. three notes, any of those guys, you know, I exactly. Who it is. Too. Yeah. 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 So this was, this was fun JW and, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in, in Providence area there in Moonsocket. And uh, you know, I hope you stay safe out there on the road. Thanks man. And, uh, is there, is there any one last thing you want to tell my audience before we let you go? Oh, wow. Um, well, I hope everyone just finds me online, you know, jw-jones.com, join the email list, check out what we're doing and, um, you know, and, and on social media, JW Jones Blues. And um, yeah, man, just, uh, I My hope bad. everyone I didn't ask you what your latest release is, JW. Tell me about it. Oh, that's your, okay. Yeah, yeah it's, it's your called, latest uh, yeah, Sonic Departures. It's my 11th album. Uh, we released a live record a couple of years ago and this is my 11th. I thought it would be cool to take the big band sound that we had been, we just did a couple of shows with the big band yeah. and, um, and then the pandemic hit and I was like, okay, wow, I've got these tracks. So maybe I'll make a little EP or something, put out four songs, throw it on the website. Yeah. And then um, as we started mixing it, I was in my house, the producer was in his place across town and I could see his, his screen. I could hear his professional audio from his, you know, system, the whole deal. And we we're on the phone. So we could just work together all day. And as we started doing it, we were like, man, this sounds so good. Let's just make a whole record here. And we had nothing else to do, you know? So we yeah. did, we made, made the whole record and uh, did a bunch of vocal overdubs and a couple band overdubs and things. And man, it's, it's a cool, it's a cool record. I'm really That's happy awesome. With it. Well, you know, yeah. when you come to Connecticut, if you come to my house, we can play lawn hockey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sounds good. I'm just teasing you, man. <laughs> you know, nobody in America even knows what lawn hockey is. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, okay. No, no. Okay. You're Canadian. All right. <laughs> All right, man. Well, this was a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. All right. Take care, brother. Okay. Take care. Bye.